Je dis c'est vendredi, vendredi 25 octobre 2024. Mesdames et messieurs, donc nous avons pile bagay nous ta doit discuter à jeudi là dans ça qui gain pour avec information. Nous avons plus passé 20 000 moun qui étaient rempli un stade hier qui c'est James R. Alford hier dans Atlanta dans Georgia. Côté Kamala Harris et Barack Obama, nous avons Tyler Perry, nous avons un paquet de gros têtes qui étaient là hier, et bien qui tape encourager le peuple pour aller voter pour Kamala Harris. Mais nous avons Tyler qui vraiment démonté M. Kirillé Donald Trump, là. et nous avons Obama qui était secoué à ce stade-là. Et nous avons également, mesdames et messieurs, Kamala Harris, c'est ça le blé hier, li a dit à plus que 20 000 personnes qui étaient réunies et maintenant où elle est dans Atlanta, Georgia. Donc Kamala Harris passe dans l'autre étape dans le domaine, dans le dossier campagne. Dans l'étape, là, c'est venu avec des de, de personnes qui ont un profil qui est vraiment high, des personnes qui sont vraiment populaires dans la communauté. Hein? Côté que jeudi vendredi, Kamala Harris a accompagné avec Beyoncé pour aller dans Texas, dans Houston, Texas. Ça veut dire dans la dernière semaine, ça, jeudi à nous, 11 jours de élection. Nous avons seulement 11 jours de élection. Kamala a bataille sérieusement pour le capable de gagner la bataille. Là. Je vais tout regarder Kamala Harris avec Barack Obama, Tyler Perry, avec, euh, et pour nous capable de citer ça au seulement, mais un pilote personnage t'est passé pour être capable d'encourager le peuple à aller voter. Donc, euh, Obama a gagné le même discours, hein, quand il a continué à dire dans deux premières années Donald Trump, c'est l'économie pâle, Donald Trump lui-même, lui, t'est abusé, ça veut dire l'économie Barack Obama t'est quitté. Et ça, c'est une vérité que tout le monde confirme. C'est Obama qui est là pendant 8 ans, qui est pouvoir par Donald Trump pendant 2 ans. Et puis après reste 2 ans, il passe dans le COVID-19. Ça veut dire, mesdames et messieurs, et Donald Trump n'a pas fait un an. Dans 4 ans, il a été gagné dans le an. Donc, Kamala Harris fait connaître, c'est pour nous qui avons fait confiance. Et pas aucun moyen, nous qui avons fait, monsieur, sa confiance. C'est lui même, il était fan de Perry, il était vraiment fan de sentir que les jeunes hommes qui ont les Donald Trump sont racistes, c'est n'est qui pas accepté noir, non building mio, etc. Ce n'est pas monde qui compte misère, ce n'est pas monde qui compte la vie, ce n'est pas monde qui compte l'OECA, ce n'est pas monde qui compte gain dette. Donc, pas aucune raison pour un peuple qui a choisi Donald Trump comme président. Alors, et... En pile cause, nous avons parlé parler tout à l'heure, bien sûr. Nous gagnons un juge dans Ohio qui annule définitivement interdiction à votement. Interdiction à votement. Dans l'état clé, après, nous avons environ six semaines et nous critiqué un bien et procureur général républicain parce qu'elle tentait de contourner volontairement habitants Ohio qui te voté pour inscrire protection à votement. Non, constitution, l'État. Ça, ce sont des gros, gros points qui vraiment ont un impact sur l'élection. Et nous gagnons quelques bagailles pour nous parler. Nous gagnons une fusillade entre deux groupes criminels. Ça passe dans le pays Mexique qui fait encore 16 morts. Il y a une parlé de 19. Je dis à nous, nous avons l'autre 16 morts. Quand nous avons deux groupes armés et mais deux gros camps. Cap Goumé, de groupe criminel dans le pays Mexique qui fait 16 morts. Insécurité a pas seulement bon la caille. L'autre côté tout, mesdames et messieurs, nous avons chanté un superstar, donc je ne sais pas le Beyoncé, qui a accompagné Kamala Harris dans la eh, campagne électorale jeudi. D'après ça, Miami Herald t'a fait connaître qu'il y a un hélicoptère Nations Unies dans le pays d'Haïti qui t'a reçu plusieurs cartouches. Et pendant qu'il a passé sous tête Grand Ravine, il a passé sous tête Grand Ravine, il t'a reçu plusieurs cartouches, mesdames et messieurs. Et c'est pendant qu'on a gagné, mais on pas joué du tout, il a fait essayer de descendre l'hélicoptère. Et c'est l'hélicoptère qui a porté aide humanitaire à l'autre monde qui est dans le quartier retiré. Bah, la difficile dans le pays d'Haïti, 
e nou genyen moun mowo moun ka fou pey nan la tibonite moun se ou komanse retoune la kayo apre plusye ane apre plusye ane bandi gran grif yo te okipe zon lan Gras ak intervensyon la polis, fos multinasyonal lan, ki finalman rekipere teritwa. Map di yon bagay, seryo mwen. Pada map li not sa. Fam di nou ke, la tibonit, pa jem yon zon gang. Li pa jem yon kate gang. Espesyalman ba la tibonit la, pa jem yon kate gang. Moun, nan ba la tibonit, se te moun. Sete moun akè. De jen gason ki kwe nan plante poa, nan plante djiri, nan pike djiri, ki kwe nan gade bef yo. Se sa moun bala tibonit te ye. Se politisyen aïsyen ki fe jen gason nan bala tibonit konen kou liye yon, se zam pou yo kembe pou yo manje. Alò, mpa kwe se yon vanta pou la polis ki nan pou sonde ki al nan pou sonde, kouri de ke gren gang fè ou toune nan baz yo. La mba bezon nouvel sa mèm. Dosye imigran, peyi Jamaïk rive depote 17 haïsien, yap ese fè l mèm jan e Sandomeng li mèm la fè l la. Gwen entrepriz finere, dok nan Wanamet, ki deside fè kado se ke la ak fom vanyan, nou konen se Milouri Silfra ki te rive mouri, Dok pa maladi ke li menm li tap soufri. Emye, pou sa, mi lou rite fè pou kominote ya. Bon, mbose ke mok sa li bien fè. Bay, mi lou ri, se ke la, medam zè, monsye. Gen komisè muskade ki meti an bakod, e yon setin de Ferguson Alti, monsye son responsab doa zume, ki ta mache pren kob sou non komisè muskade nan men diaspora. Yon konen kan pil neg, ki ese yutilize muskade pou yo kapab fè la jan. Bonjou, bonsou a tou zami, koman nou yem esper nan fom, si nap gade video sa nou la toujou, e nou di papa bon dje ki yon nan se la gwo mersi ki fè nou kado yon jou en plus. Nou pa mse MPH, zami myore le MP, ma bel eleni MPP, se tout ton plezir maten yon pou m pase, pou m fou nou informasyon. Sou a pen vini m'encourajou pou kapab abone, like e partaje informasyon an tout kote, se fason pou kapab me supporte travay sa. Dè sa mdi ou ka blye sov li. Pa blye la gen yon like an ba videyo a. MPH, dok e pwen de yon, se MPH ka bo informasyon len gen problem sou no chanel la, pok ou abone sou li, e son sine kwa nan li ye. Si se, fan e kip MK ki vou ye ou, pa jam blye di se MK ki vou ye. An nou avanse, nan e informasyon nou yo, maten yon, Jan ke nou sot eksplike ou la, medam zè mousye, emyen e situasyon an te bel, te gon gwo evenman nan Atlanta, Georgia, yer. E franchman, pata ka gen pi bel evenman ke evenman sa. Kamala Harris ki utilize yon strategi ki pa fasil utilize de la politik ou Zetaz Unis d'Amerik, kote ke nèg yo kon mette tout fos yo de yo, pou ke yo kapab emye gen eleksyon. Yen te gen Tyler Perry, ki te avek Kamala Harris, nou te gen yen, nou te gen yen, lejand sa, ki se Bruce Springsteen, ki te avek Kamala Harris, fome prezident Barack Obama, yo tout te la, san kote diskou Kamala Harris yer, pou kapab konvenke komunote yon, konvenke populasyon yon, pou yal vote nan jou eleksyon si la. Dok an pil moun deklare el ke yo pa jan mwen yon evenman parey, men se te vreman ekstraordinaire. Bon moutou kelke imaj, paske tout a lè, mbral ki te outan de koman Kamala li menm li tape fè diskou li. Dok se trez interesan se ou pale anglè, ou ap kapab kompren mye, paske lap difisil pou ke m ta tradui tout ou bien interprete Tout diskou sa a, ki te vreman long yer, e pou m ta interprete tout, pou m ta di ou koman ba la li menm li te pase. Me an general, se pou fe pep la konen, Donald Trump pa fit pou l prezident des Etats-Unis. Dok, pa gò ken choa pou n fit pou n prezident des Etats-Unis. Ta lè li menm, li fe konen ke Donald Trump, 
Donald Trump, c'est nègre, côté que dans le building, monsieur, il a fait toute recherche lui-même, il a parler de Donald Trump. Malheureusement, il a réalisé que nègre qui est Donald Trump, c'est vraiment, et j'aime ta cap traduit, son raciste. Et rêve américain, monsieur dit, il a non Kamala Harris. Et ça l'a fait, elle pas fait pour jouer, il a fait le péril de sa vie, même s'il est arrivé à mourir, mais il a défendu un grand monde. La défense Kamala Harris. Il faut que moi dise que nous avons seulement 11 jours de élection et figure ça yo yo gen pour faire un impact sérieux dans élection si là. Ou gen pour faire un choix entre démocratie avec euh, dictature dans pays États-Unis ou même qui cap voter. Fait choix Kamala Harris, c'est fait choix démocratie, fait choix Donald Trump, c'est fait choix dictature. Yo tous les deux bon pour moun ki reme yo. Dictature la bon pour moun ki reme et démocratie a bon pour moun ki se démocrate. Donc pour même ki haïtien k ap tande ki pral vote. Ou gon choix. Ou gen un choix d'après tendance politique là, Jean Donald Trump pou bagay yo, si le président, il s'en fout d'Haïti. Si nous avons un gouvernement qui est un gouvernement haïtien, peut-être qu'il fait un bagage pour le pays. Nous. Et si nous avons un Kamala Harris, nous avons suivi Biden. Yo. Mais, l'en penche vers l'immigration, et regardez comment Haïti est dans 15 dernières années, nous sentons que les politiciens haïtiens ne pas souffert rien que sérieux. Et l'en garde, ce n'est pas politicien, la police. Ak la mengen la, c'est deux forces qui comptent le peuple là. C'est pour l'État y a travail. Là, pas jam gon mouvement populaire qui passe, parce que la police, avec l'armée, vient à travailler pour l'État dans le pays, contre le peuple. Un policier qui saute dans la misère, m'a mal pas capé kay, mais la défend l'État, nous vient pas gen espoir, mesdames et messieurs. Donc, situation est très compliquée. Pour nous-mêmes, pour nous dire un jour, nous t'as sorti dans sa nia, nous pas fini, nous pas qui moyen, nous pral sorti dans sa nia là. Mais rien pas impossible pour bon Dieu. Dans le domaine immigration, bon garanti, sous vote Donald Trump, ni cousin, ni cousine nous, si femme ou te rentre dans le programme Biden, nous déjà Haïti. Ça c'est garanti, mais de pour voter on Donald Trump, c'est lui qui président. Alors, nous nous sommes forcés de rentrer dans le programme Biden. Non? Donc, je pense que le confort est clair au café. Si vous voulez déporter les femmes ou rentrer dans le programme Biden, non? ou pas besoin de parler en pile, ou voter Donald Trump. Si vous même, ou connaissez, ou avez des gens qui rentrent dans le pays, qui font petit, vous ne pouvez pas avoir des papiers, vous ne pouvez pas avoir des documents, vous pouvez mettre déjà qu'on est petit, ça, vous ne pouvez pas américain, vous pouvez voter Donald Trump. Si vous êtes d'accord pour que les gens qui ont été déportés, vous êtes déporté malgré tout, vous mettez voter Donald Trump. Vous mettez voter Donald Trump. Vous mettez voter Donald Trump si vous êtes d'accord. C'est un nègre qui est millionnaire. C'est eux même qui pour gagner droit. Vous ne pas payer de taxes. Et puis les gens riches ont payé de taxes pour les gens millionnaires. Vous mettez voter Donald Trump. Vous mettez voter Donald Trump si vous êtes d'accord. Son milliardaire qui pourra le contrôler ça que les bonnes gouvernances dans le pays a n'a parlé de n'a parlé de Elon Musk c'est lui qui pourra le contrôler bon, bonne gouvernance ça veut dire bah go entreprise yo passe fait mettre entreprise petit yo ou mettre voter Donald Trump ou bien plusieurs raisons sur son raciste pour voter pour Donald Trump moun qui voter voté pour Donald Trump yo c'est son des moun qui pas jamais immigrant et si n'a pas les pour intérêt par nous, il n'y a pas de Jamaïcien. Si on a des gens qui sont dans le pouvoir Haïti, ils sont fanatiques pouvoir, et puis il y a des gens pour voter. Mais pas aucune petite soyette, aucune malheureuse pour aller voter Donald Trump. Non, ou pas besoin de ça. Ok? Malheureux, c'est mon nom, il faut les fréquents, les gens qui prennent un risque là quand même. Mais, et ça pour aller gagner, on ne peut pas gagner un cœur pour vivre. Hum mm ça pour al gagner ou pas bien que pour vivre li quand même ou c'est un indigné pour garder comment il y a paquet un paquet 
haïtien pareil ou nan kek terrain football nan kek savane et puis pour déporter au Haïti parce que c'est plan ça Donald Trump gagné et premier côté l'a commencé li clair parce que Donald Trump c'est chaque événement rivé le grand plan li pas ko jam connait qui côté l'a commencé déportation massive là li pral commencer li dans Springfield Ohio et c'est ça que lui même lui dit donc on nous prend quelques petits détails parce que li important pour nous tendre Kamala Harris et avec Barack Obama et Tyler Perry qui était dans Atlanta Georgia hier yeah, mesdames et messieurs donc et selon Reuters nous gagnons et vice-président Kamala Harris qui est actuel candidat à la présidence pour Parti démocrate là. Donc, euh, lui fait preuve de soutien à l'agent de Bush, Springsteen. Nous avons artiste Tyler Perry, ancien président Barack Obama, hier jeudi. Nous avons un grand rassemblement, côté nous avons plus que 20 000 personnes réunies. En pile cause de parler, discours intéressant, c'est un des pour dire. Yon juge nan Ohio, yon juge nan Ohio, rive bloke interdiction à votement contre le cœur. Critique procureur général républicain. Son gros coup pour Donald Trump. Gros coup. Mesdames yon sorti en foule pour protéger sa que les droits yon gagne pour yon ka avorter. Bon. C'est ton mot longtemps, l'autre est en d'elle, ou t'es vraiment pas compris. Mais je dis, on fait légal. L'État fait avortement légal. Mesdames et messieurs, je me connais, c'est chrétien, c'est religieux, etc. Mais l'État dans le pays des États-Unis fait avortement légal. Les autorités viennent de Dieu. Juge Christian Jenkins. C'est lui-même qui se juge dans le tribunal comté Hamilton. Côté que lui-même dans le Sénat, et de une loi en 2019 qui était soutenue par les républicains, c'est mandé pour interdire le dossier à votre main. Eh bien, le juge là, lui, annulé ça définitivement. Annulé, il voulait dire pour les gens qui droit pour décider ça, il voulait faire quoi yo. Dans le bureau du procureur général de l'Ouaïo, c'est des vios qui sont républicains. Ils reconnaissent qu'il y a une interdiction en lui-même. Pas capable de tenir compte de l'initiative sous bulletin de vote. Mais, ils te fait voir là qu'il y a 14 autres dispositions de loi. L'État a droit de respecter. Donc, oui, il a gagné un impact sur l'interdiction de vote. Parce que, automatiquement Donald Trump monté président tout ça yo a retourné encore et, et nos gagnants candidats démocrates yo yo continue intensifier ça les messages immigration dans dernière semaine campagne là c'est le cas de candidats démocrates dans congrès yo yo changé et bien et façon yo même yo connage sous de ces lois sur immigration Côté que l'immigration est devenue un sujet préminent dans le dossier de l'élection à Nessa. Il parlé en pile dans la publicité télévisée et dans la campagne au cours des sept dernières semaines. Alors que y a 15% de messages pro-démocrates qui abordaient la question immigration, sécurité frontière là, et hausse des prix des produits de première nécessité. Gon sondage dans le routeuse qui achevait semaine ça qui montre que 65 électeurs inscrits qui pensaient que les États-Unis sous ont mauvaise voie dans la politique immigration. Électeurs ont favorisé approche du candidat républicain Donald Trump et majorité monde yo c'est républicain que yo qui yo même voulait adopter politique de déportation massive là. Insécurité de tous côtés dans le pays, 
et dans le monde là. Ce n'est pas seulement en Haïti pour sentir la vie finie. Mais dans le pays d'Haïti, oui, il y a une insécurité. Côté que nous la police a pour vous corps, le le ministère de la justice qui dit yo clean la tibonite. Moi même moi mettez accent pour me dire on sonde ka fou pay. Jean ça toujours recevoir visite gang. Gang yo pas de jambe habité là. Nèg yo met un poste pour yo faire capable de faire et la collecte mais c'est pas là il était. C'est que la police pas qu'entre dans sa vie pour la démanteler les gangs, il n'y a pas de parler de démanteler les gangs. Parce que les gangs, c'est dans sa vie que la base principale. Yo. Et le peuple de la Tibonite n'a pas de continuer à battre bravo. Les que ou passez en l'air, leur font des choses, ou pas entrer dans la racine de pied bois. Si vous avez besoin de tuer pied bois, c'est la racine pour couper et pas branche. Si branche yon coupé, depuis la plus tombe, y a repoussé. Mais si racine nan coupé, même si branche yon en lè, y a sèche. Si la police te besoin de problème nan vrai, y a pral sa vie. Ok? Li te pral sa vie. Et puis te pral derrière bon gang yon kote nan yon habite yon. Mais je dis yon, et rete nan kafoua la sou grand ouyon, nèg yo toujours font passer là et les massacres la fait li fait nan zone non mais c'est réinforme encore mande côté gang y habite si nous besoin de loger alors dans Mexique deux groupes armés a goumé nèg yo rivé faire encore l'autre 16 morts nan Mexique c'est ça autorité au déclaré jeudi matin vers 5h du matin des cartels belligérants y ont fait face dans la région rurale, montagneuse, état qui devenu un champ de bataille dernière année. Sa. Mexique, tout le monde connaît. C'est bon pays qui j'en en paix. Mexique, on a dit majorité pays a contrôlé par gang. Mais ça n'a pas empêché le pays à fonctionner. Vous comprenez ça? Gang, c'est les drogues qui sont nourri. Mais en Haïti, c'est l'État qui sponsorise. C'est ça qui fait nous-mêmes, nous n'avons pas qu'à gagner solution au problème. Hier, il y a un hélicoptère qui a passé en l'air, et bien, qui a pris à le délivrer, qui a pris à manger, par les Haïtiens qui ont un problème, qui l'autre côté de pas avancer. Les grands avions ont ouvert une cartouche sous lui, sur l'hélicoptère UN, Nations Unies. Pour nous montrer dans quel niveau de sécurité a lui-même été traversé, mais monsieur a ouvert cartouche sous hélicoptère. Malheureusement, on n'y est pas arrivé. Donc ça a été arrivé l'hélicoptère lui-même, l'écrasé. C'est un avion, c'est difficile. L'assemblée au conseil Haïti au Brésil et tout, l'assemblée hélicoptère a blindé. Ça cause monsieur pas arrivé la guerre hélicoptère à terre. Son face au bon cas montré, non qui niveau et monsieur yo dévoué en Haïti pour yo mettre en sécurité. Donc yo dévoué tout bon dans dossier sécurité à yo dévoué pour yo faire bagaille. M'a dit ça sérieusement, si yo pas prend rapide, si toutefois ne pas chercher jouer non solution et nos conn solution Haïtien qui parle de Haïti, il n'y a pas de solution. Haïtien, peut-être, je ne sais pas habiter dans le monde, il n'y a pas de solution. Solution, c'est les gangs qui ont dit, il n'y a pas de remède à ceux qui ont des zones. C'est les messieurs qui ont dit, il n'y a pas de remède à des policiers qui ont des gangs. Et les gens qui ont dirigé, ils ont des gangs. Yo pas pris mes jam. Yo pas mes solutions. Le monsieur dit qu'on qui moun s'il monte qu'a créé travail pour yo, y a pris mes jam non. 
et il apparaît devant la justice. Ça, son déclaration claire, barbecue, fait qu'on est, lui prête pour le paraître devant la justice avec toute équipe liant, si toutefois, il y a une équipe honnête qui prend le pays. Mais les Nations Unies, l'ONU, OEA, l'Union Européenne, solution, ça n'a pas bon pour eux. Parce que leader moun yo a crié de la, pas nan sens yo. C'est ça que nan sens yo yo besoin. L'el je peuple la clé, m'kwe peuple la va wè, nan ki sa, li même lié. Je dis yon m'kwe l'kite n'tade, Kamala Harris, Tyler Perry, avec uh, pre, ancien président Barack Obama, nan discours yo, yo ta fait nan état Georgia. Entende yo, mesdames et messieurs. Uh, hello, hello, hello. I got to tell you, I've been a resident here for a little more than 30 years, so I know a few things about Georgia. Uh, what I want to share with you today is that this is where I found the American dream for myself. And, and lately I found myself having my feet in two different worlds. One where I'm talking to very wealthy people at their table and then I come to work and I'm talking to people who work for me about everyday problems and everyday issues. So it puts me in a very, very peculiar spot to be able to talk to you. And I'm grateful for that, having my feet in both those worlds because I still remember what it was like to stand at the Winn-Dixie on Buford Highway and have, uh -huh, and have $20 and try to figure out how do I make this meal work for the week. I know what it's like to have my landlord knocking at the door and I'm in the bed hiding because I don't want him to knock on the door because I know he has an eviction notice. I know what it's like to be homeless here in Georgia. I know what it's like to have to scrape up enough money to get to stay at a pay by the week hotel off of Buford Highway. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to sleep in my car wrapped in my grandmother's quilt because I had no place to go. I know what it's like to come from work and walk outside and realize that my car has been repossessed. So make no mistake, I know and I remember how hard it is and I remember the struggle and I also know, hear me, how expensive it is to be poor. But I also believed in an American dream. And when I was coming here to Georgia, I was looking for inspiration and there was this show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous. And there was a man on there that I really admired, I looked up to. He had a helicopter and his name was on hotels all over the place. He was, hold on just a second, let me get through this so you hear what I'm saying. <laughs> Young black men admired him because his name was in rap lyrics. So when I first started making a little money, the first thing I did was check into the Trump Hotel because I wanted to feel that specialness. But then I started to do my research. Research is important. Uh huh. Truth is important. Facts are important. I found out about a discrimination lawsuit against he and his father because they didn't want people like me in their building. I found out about him taking a full page ad out on young black men in the New York Times. I found out about the birther lie. We all heard it saying that Barack Obama was not born in this country. There are undertones there and there are echoes there that we all had to pay attention to. So I watched him when he won the presidency. I watched him say that there were good people on both sides when neo-Nazis were screaming, Jews will not replace us. I watched him from the Central Park Five to Project 2025. <laughs> And what I realize is that in this Donald Trump America, there is no dream that looks like me. We want a president who believes that this American dream is for everyone. And that president is Kamala Harris. We want a president that understands, like I did in Georgia when I came here, I didn't have anything, but I had a dream. So I worked, and against all odds, I worked my way to where I am now. It was here in Georgia. See, in Georgia, you know what we do? We don't sit around and complaining, we go to work. It was here where I became a studio owner. My first studio was on Crog Street. Now that is Crog Street Market. 
And then I bought another studio, which was on uh, Greenbrier, uh, right near Greenbrier Mall on Continental College Parkway. And it was there that Barack Obama came in 2012 to do a fundraiser. And he was getting ready to leave, and he said, come ride with me, we're going to my house for a fundraiser. And I'm like, wait, you want me to ride with you and the beast? So I get in the car and traffic is stopped and we're riding and we're riding and he's talking to me. And for those of you who are old enough to remember Charlie Brown, all I heard was wah, 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 wah. I finally said, I'm sorry, Mr. President, but I haven't heard a word you've said because I'm in awe of this country. What a great country that you could become president of the United States. And he turned to me quick as a flash and he said, yes, but what a great country that you could become Tyler Perry. Yeah. From that moment, I went and I bought a bigger studio. I bought Fort McPherson Army Base. Yeah. Right now, where we hire thousands of people are coming through that doors. And I don't care what was stacked up against me. I don't care. I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that. What I paid attention to was how do I help somebody? The, I broke through that door, laid it down on its side, and let it become a ramp so that somebody else can get higher, too. You want to hear something about an American dream? Fort McPherson was once a Confederate army base where there were Confederate soldiers trying to plot and plan on how to keep 3.9 million Negroes enslaved. Now that land is owned by me. Let's talk about an American dream. It's seniors working so hard and working hard and working seniors working hard. And what I realized when I bought it, that seniors around, their taxes were going through the roof. So what I did was, I was like, no, 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 you're not gonna come here and take these seniors' houses. I paid everybody's taxes up for years so, so that they can keep their houses. When an 85-year-old woman in Coweta County lost her house to a fire and wanted a place for all her grandkids, I rebuilt that house for her. Most recently, I saw in the AJC a story where there was a woman who hired this contractor and he gutted her house and left her there with nothing. She was living in a house with no plumbing and no walls for years. I rebuilt that house for her. Why am I telling you this? I'm not telling you this to be bragging. What I'm telling you about it is, what I want you to understand is I have compassion for our seniors. So when a candidate says, when a candidate says that we have lowered the cost of insulin to $35 for seniors, that candidate has my vote. I put many kids through college and recently there was a family, a woman who was murdered by her husband and she had three kids that were of college age. I put all those kids through college. So when I hear a candidate say, we are going to do what we can to reduce student loan debt, that is a candidate that I can stand with. I stand with a candidate who has an American dream for everyone. She stands with us. And she has an American dream for our children. And let me tell you something about the children. I don't know if you remember, but her DNC speech was great, right? But there's a moment that you may have missed. When the cameras, we're rolling and she was walking around and the balloons are falling and confetti's falling. I'm watching her smile and wave, her family comes out. But there are two little girls on the stage and I see her constantly making sure they're okay, not getting too close to the edge. That's what you want. See, the little things will tell you about the heart of a person. In that speech, she talked about how we have more in common than what separates us. So Georgia, I wanna put that to the test. I didn't have a father who gave me millions of dollars to start a business. Did you? Didn't think so. My mother didn't have some great legacy, but she taught me how to pray my way through a situation. It sounds like we have that in common. I'm the kind of American that believes in a secure border, but at the same time believes that if anyone is coming seeking legal asylum, our arms should be open to them. 
I'm the kind of American that believes that if you are running for office, you shouldn't sink and tank a bipartisan bill to help the border so that you could use it for your own glory. If you are like me, I worked my ass off to buy my first house and build my business and take care of my family. That is the American dream. I believe if you work that hard and you put into Social Security, when you get to a certain age, that that you put in should be there waiting for you because it's yours. I believe that we all should have affordable health care and it not be replaced with the concept of a plan. What the hell? <laughs> I'm the kind of American that believes that no matter what your party, we ought to be able to sit down and have civil conversation so that we can work toward a solution the same as I do with our governor, Brian Kemp. I'm the kind of man that believes, I'm the kind of man that believes that the government nor a man should be telling a woman what she can and cannot do with her body. I'm the kind of American who believes that poll workers should do their civic duty without being harassed and threatened like Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss in Fulton County. And I'm not the, I am not the kind of American that glories in, enjoys, laughs at, or celebrates an 80-year-old man being hit with a hammer because his wife is in politics and you don't agree with her. And two things can be true at once. I am not the kind of man that glory in, celebrates, enjoy, or laughs at a 78-year-old former president almost meeting his death at an assassin's bullet in Butler's, Pennsylvania. It's not right. It's about decency, America, and I think you agree with me. But I am the kind of American that believes if you lose an election, that you honor the constitutional, peaceful transfer of power. And judging by your reaction, I believe Kamala is right. We have more in common than what separates us. As I'm closing here, I just want to talk about that quilt that I used to wrap up in my grandmother's car, that quilt, in my car, that quilt that my grandmother gave me. That quilt was a tapestry of beautiful pieces, but I completely ignored it. I didn't think it was worth anything because she had made it from all of these stitches and gave it to me as a gift. And I was walking past this antique store years later and I saw one in the window and I go, wow, that's a beautiful quilt. It reminds me of my grandmother. So I walk in, I talk to the lady. She started explaining to me that each patch in that quilt was worth this and meant this because of the woman who made it. So when I think about America, I think about my grandmother's quilt. We are all shapes, sizes, and colors, but we are one. And it was so important for me to stand with a candidate who understands that we as America, we are a quilt. And I could never stand with a candidate who wants America to be a sheet. So today, I voted for Kamala Harris. And Georgia, it was only about 11,400 votes that separated Trump and Biden. So every vote counts. So I stand here, full-throated, with my full chest, begging you, imploring you, let's get out and make Kamala Harris the 47th president of the United United, United States of America. Thank you, everybody. God bless you.
I'm done with all I have to say except one thing. That man who was in the beast with me. You know him, Michelle's husband. One I've always admired and looked up to, and I'm glad to be able to say this. Ladies and gentlemen, the 44th President of the United States, Mr. Barack Obama. I love you too. Now, now, now we know, we know this election is going to be tight because a lot of Americans are still struggling. As a country, we've been through a lot. As a country, we've been through a lot over the last few years. We had a historic pandemic that wrecked havoc on communities and businesses. And then disruptions from the pandemic caused price hikes that put a strain on family budgets. And people feel like, no matter how hard they work, sometimes it feels like they're just treading water. So I get why people are looking to shake things up. What I cannot understand is why anybody would think that Donald Trump will shake things up in a way that is good for you. Because there is absolutely no evidence that this man thinks about anybody but himself. I've said it before. Donald Trump is a 78-year-old billionaire who has not stopped whining about his problems since he rode down that golden escalator nine years ago. And when he's not complaining, when he's not sending out crazy tweets, he's trying to sell you stuff. <laughs> I, he's trying to sell you gold sneakers. Trying to sell you a $100,000 watch. Trying to sell you a Trump Bible. Wants to sell you the Word of God, Donald Trump edition. Got his name right there next to Matthew and Luke. Now, you cannot make this stuff up. If this was on a Saturday Night Live skit, you'd say, well, no, that's crazy. But he's doing it. Because all he cares about is his ego, his money, his status. That's his mindset. Those are his intentions. And then there's the question of his competence. I mean, have you seen Donald Trump lately? He, he out there giving two-hour speeches, just word salad. Said the other day, January 6th was a day of love, he said that. Like it was Woodstock or Coachella. If, if your grandpa was acting like this, you'd call up your brother, call up your cousin, you say, hey, have you noticed grandpa? He acting kind of funny right now. But here, here's the interesting thing, is he acts so crazy and it's become so common that people no longer take it seriously. I, I'm here to explain to you, just because he acts goofy does not mean his presidency wouldn't be dangerous. And you do not have to take my word for it. Lately, some of the people who know Donald Trump best have been saying in no uncertain terms that he should not be president again. The, the other day, General John Kelly, Donald Trump's former chief of staff, said that Trump told him he wanted his generals to be like Hitler's generals. Now, don't boo. Vote. Now, I, I want to explain that in politics, a good rule of thumb is don't say you want to do anything like Hitler. <laughs> you know, that's just good political advice. But it is useful because it gives us a window into how Donald Trump thinks. And, and John Kelly isn't the only one saying this. Two of his defense secretaries, people who worked for him, said the same thing. 
his chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. That is the top of the top brass in our military said he is dangerous. Now, I happen to know John Kelly and Mark Miller. They served under me when I was commander in chief. These are serious people. These are, th this is a decorated soldier and Marine who served in battle. They are not quote unquote woke liberals. They are people who have never in the past even talked about politics because they believe that the military should be above politics. But the reason they're speaking up is because they have seen that in Donald Trump's mind, the military does not exist to serve the Constitution or the American people. He doesn't see being commander-in-chief as a solemn sacred responsibility, just like everything else. He thinks the military exists to do his bidding, to serve his interests. He said if he's elected, he'll use that military to go after, quote, the enemy within, which he defines as anybody who criticizes him or refuses to bend the knee. He can't handle that. And unlike last time, Unlike the first time, he won't have people like John Kelly around to stop him. He'll be surrounded by people who are just as loony as he is <laughs> and who will let him do what he wants. And so my question to you, Georgia, is how is any of that going to help you? We do not need four years of a wannabe King, a wannabe dictator running around trying to punish his enemies. That's not what you need in your life. America's ready to turn the page. We are ready for a better story. Georgia, we're ready for a president, Kamala Harris. And the good news is that Kamala Harris is ready for the job. This is a leader who has spent her life fighting on behalf of people who need a voice, who need a champion. Kamala wasn't born into privilege. She was raised in a middle-class family. She worked at McDonald's when she was in college to pay her expenses. She didn't pretend to work at McDonald's when it was closed for a photo op. She actually cares what people are going through, because she's seen it in her own family, in her own life. As a prosecutor, Kamala stood up for children who'd been victims of sexual abuse. As Attorney General of California, fought the big, ba fought the big banks and for-profit colleges, secured billions of dollars for people after they'd been scammed. After the home mortgage crisis, Kamala pushed me and my administration hard to make sure homeowners got a fair settlement. It didn't matter that I was a Democrat, that she had knocked on doors for my campaign in Iowa, she was not going to let anybody stop her from winning as much relief as possible for families who deserved it. So the, the point I'm making, if you elect Kamala Harris, she will not be focused on her problems, her ego, her money. She's going to be focused on you. She's going to be focused on you. Kamala understands that too many folks here in Georgia and across the country are struggling to pay the bills. Now, I understand wages are steadily growing. Unemployment is low. Inflation is finally slowing. But we all know the price of everything from housing to health care to groceries is still too high. And it hurts. She understands that. The question is, who's really going to do something about it? So Donald Trump's plan is to give another Massive tax cut to billionaires and big corporations. Because he was a reality star on The Apprentice, there are some folks who think, well, I don't know, he's a businessman. He must know something about the economy. I, I, I've heard people say this, right? I'll talk to him. Why, why would you think about voting for this guy? Well, they're all, well, I remember the economy when he first came in. It was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it was good because it was my economy. I had 
had spent, I, I, I had spent, I had spent eight years cleaning up the mess that the Republicans have left me. And then I handed over 75 straight months of job growth to Donald Trump. And all he did was give tax cuts to folks who didn't need it, drove up the deficit in the process, and now he wants to do it again. You can't give him credit for that. And then I, th th then I hear, the, the other thing I hear, some folks will be like, well, Donald Trump sent me a check <laughs> during the pandemic. No, 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 y'all know, because I've heard this, I know y'all, some of you heard that. Hey, let me, let, me, let me make sure y'all understand this. Joe Biden sent you a check during the pandemic. Just like I gave people relief during the Great Recession. The thing is, we didn't put our name on it because it wasn't about feeding our egos. It wasn't about advancing our politics. It was about helping people. That's the difference. Don't be giving them credit for that. Come on. They sent you a check. Do not fall for that okie doke. Don't be bamboozled. <laughs> don't get fooled. And don't get fooled when he talks about health care either. You ask, you ask Donald Trump what he's going to do to make health care more affordable. His only answer is end Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act. He doesn't really know why he wants to end it except for the fact that I passed it. The problem he's got now is that it's popular because 50 million people have gotten health care because of it. So, a couple weeks ago, you remember uh, during the vice presidential debate, his running mate had the nerve, had the hook spot to say that Donald Trump, quote, salvaged the Affordable Care Act. Donald Trump spent his entire presidency trying to tear that thing down. And he couldn't even do that right. And now, eight years after he was elected, when he was asked, well, what are you going to do? He says, well, I've got concepts of a plan for how he'd replace it. Now, I want you all to think about this for a second. Let's say your boss on the job gives you an assignment, says, I need it by Friday. Friday rolls around, your boss says, so did you finish that project I asked you to do? And you say, well, I haven't actually started, but I, I, I got a concept for a plan. <laughs> or or uh, you could try this at home. Uh, honey, did you throw out the trash? I have a concept of a plan to throw out the trash. How's that going to go over? <laughs> On the couch. That's how it'll go over. If it wouldn't work for you, why should it work for the next president of the United States? The good news is that Kamala Harris doesn't have concepts of a plan. She got a plan to make your life better. She's going to go after corporations that unfairly jack up prices. She's going to make it easier to build and buy a home. She's going to limit out-of-pocket health care costs. She's going to give a tax cut to 100 million middle-class families and working Americans. And if Congress passes a bill to restore the reproductive freedom that women had for nearly 50 years, the freedom that Donald Trump bragged about taking away, Kamala will sign it into law. It's an example of how elections matter. And, and, and I have to say, I, I, I get why folks get frustrated with politics. I, I, I do too sometimes. I don't watch cable news. 
Because sometimes I, I get why people block it out. It just seems like everybody arguing and fussing. And, but I always tell people, look, politics, it's not going to solve all your problems. No president is going to eliminate poverty in one term or eliminate racism. Because those problems are hard. It, it takes steps, a little bit at a time, but your vote matters because that little bit of a time, that, that, that incremental improvement, that adds up. And, and things can get a little better or they can get a little or a lot worse. When I was president, we did not solve all problems with our healthcare system, but 50 million people getting health insurance that didn't have it before, that made a difference. You know somebody who has health insurance because of it. And I'm going to give you another example. When I was president, we put together an entire playbook for how to deal with a pandemic, because we had dealt with Ebola, we had dealt with the H1N1 virus. We put together a, a plan and we practiced and we had all the agencies in terms of how you're going to do with the schools and how we're going to do with the public health agencies and we we put it all together and when Donald Trump came in we gave him that playbook and he I guess dropped it in the in the dustbin three years later a pandemic hit and I want to be fair listen to me now no matter who was president the pandemic was going to be a huge crisis people were going to get sick people were going to die businesses were going to close there'd be travel restrictions it was a once in a hundred year event. But if you look at a country like Canada, the per capita death rate during COVID was 60% lower than it was here in the United States. So you do the math. Over a million people died during the pandemic here in the US. 60% of a, over a million, that, that's 600,000 people. That's grandparents. That's aunts, that's uncles, parents, co-workers, friends. Everybody here was touched by it. Some people might have been alive if we had had a competent administration who was paying attention and trying to do things better instead of talking about injecting bleach into your arm. Now, you remember that if somebody tells you it doesn't make a difference. It will not make things perfect, but it does make a difference. To have somebody who is competent, somebody who sees you, somebody who respects you, somebody who cares about you, somebody who understands your dreams. And you need to remind folks who are still on the sidelines that the election is about more than just policies, it's about values and it is about character. Some of you know, when I was growing up, I didn't have a father in the house. But I did have people around me. Stepfather, grandparents, teachers, coaches, and most of all, my mother, who, who tried to teach me the difference between right and wrong. Who showed me what it meant to be honest and responsible, to work hard, to treat other people the way I wanted to be treated. And, and Look, I was a knucklehead sometimes when I was a kid, and I didn't always live up to those values, even as a young adult. But, but, but over time, I internalized those values. And as an adult, I said, this is what I need to stand on. This is my foundation. And I suspect most of you grew up the same way. And one of the most disturbing things about this election and about Trump's rise in politics is how we seem to have set the values we were taught aside. How we seem to disregard them. How we pretend they don't matter. When Donald Trump lies about, about hurricane aid, you've got a hurricane in North Carolina, people desperate, and he and his vice president candidate deliberately circulate rumors that that money's being given to illegal aliens, illegal immigrants, as opposed to people who are desperate. When he, when he cheats or shows utter disregard for our Constitution, when he calls service members who died in battle losers, 
or fellow citizens vermin, people make excuses for it. They act like it's okay as long as their side wins. And I've noticed this especially with some men who's, who seem to think Trump's behavior is a sign of strength, that macho, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own these folks, I'm, I'm going to put them down. Let me, I am here to tell you, that is not what real strength is. It never has been. Real strength is about working hard and taking responsibility and telling the truth even when it's inconvenient. Real strength is about helping people who need it and standing up for those who can't always stand up for themselves. That's what we should want in our daughters and our sons. And that's what I want to see in the President of the United States of America. And the good news is, we've got a candidate to vote for in this election who demonstrates that kind of character, who knows what real strength looks like, who will set a good example and do the right thing and lead this country better than she found it. That is what this election is about. And that is why it is my honor to introduce my friend, the next president of the United States of America, Vice President Kamala Harris. Campaign means the world. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. And we have some extraordinary leaders with us tonight. And I thank everybody who's here for taking time out of your busy lives to spend this evening together. I want to thank Georgia's congressional delegation, all the local and community leaders who are here with us. Let's please give it up for Samuel L. Jackson, Spike Lee, Tyler Perry, and the great American poet Bruce Springsteen. So Atlanta, before I was Vice President of the United States, before I was a United States Senator, and before that a two-term Attorney General for the state of California, and before that a district attorney and a courtroom prosecutor, and in those roles I took on perpetrators of all kinds, predators, fraudsters, and repeat offenders. I took them on and I won. Well, Georgia, in 12 days is Donald Trump's turn. <laughs> it's his turn. Just 12 days left in one of the most consequential elections of our lifetime. And I don't need to tell you voting has already started. And everybody here knows it's going to be a tight race until the very end. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. But we like hard work. Hard work is good work. Hard work is joyful work. And make no mistake, we will win. We will win. We will win. Or as a certain former president would say, yes, we can. Yes, we will, and yes, we can. And here's, here's why we're going to win. We are going to win because we, together, are fighting for the future. We are fighting for the future. We here understand we have an opportunity before us to turn the page on the fear and divisiveness that have characterized our politics for a decade because of Donald Trump. We have the opportunity to turn the page and chart a new way and a joyful way forward. A way
way that taps into the ambitions, the aspirations, the dreams of the American people. And I will tell you, as I travel our country, there is an overwhelming call for a fresh start, for a new generation of leadership that is optimistic and excited about what we can do together. There is a yearning for a president of the United States who will see you, who gets you, and who will fight for you. And my whole career, I have put the people before partisanship. I never once asked somebody, are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? Instead, I always asked, how can I help you? And that is a major difference between Donald Trump and me, and between the two very different, extremely different visions that he and I have for our nation. One, his focused on the past and himself. The other, ours, focused on the future and you. Together, we will build a future where we bring down the cost of living, and that will be my focus every single day as President of the United States. Because look, while inflation is down and wages are up, prices are still too high, you know it and I know it. And unlike Donald Trump, who had $400 million served to him on a silver platter, and still managed, managed to file for bankruptcy six times. He talks about being a good businessman, come on. <laughs> Unlike him, I grew up in a middle-class neighborhood with a working mother who kept a strict budget and did everything she could to make sure my sister and I had all that we needed. I come from the middle class, and I will never forget where I come from. I will never forget where I come from. Which is why my common sense plan will lower the prices you pay on everything from prescription drugs to groceries to housing. On the other hand, Donald Trump will raise costs on you and your families. In fact, independent economists have analyzed our plans and found that mine will cut your costs and strengthen our economy his will increase inflation and lead to a recession by the middle of next year. These are independent economists, Nobel laureate, prize-winning economists who have reviewed our plans and are very clear. And his agenda is all laid out in Project 2025, a detailed and dangerous blueprint for what he will do if he is elected president. And look, Donald Trump, intends to impose a 20% Trump national sales tax on everyday basic necessities, which will cost the average family nearly $4,000 a year. On the other hand, I will take on price gouging, corporate price gouging. I've done it before, and I will do it again. Donald Trump will give massive tax cuts to billionaires and the biggest corporations, exactly like he did the last time he was president. I will give middle-class tax cuts to 100 million Americans, including $6,000 during the first year of a child's life that will also lift, that will also lift America's children out of poverty. Donald Trump will get rid of the $35 cap on insulin for seniors. He will cut Medicare and Social Security. In fact, economists have reported he will bankrupt Social Security in just six years. My plan is a plan to support our seniors so that they can grow older with dignity. And so their families, you are not overwhelmed by the cost of home health care. And on top of that, 
My plan will bring down the cost of housing, cut taxes for small businesses. Where are the small businesses in the house? Yeah. You are the backbone of America's economy, all of you. And we will lower health care costs because I believe health care should be a right and not just a privilege of those who can afford it. Donald Trump, on the other hand, intends to end the Affordable Care Act, or like we like to call it, Obamacare. And he wants to take us back to when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. Well, we are not going back. We are not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. No, we are not. Because we will move forward, and it is time to turn the page. is a fight for the future, and it is a fight for freedom. For freedom, like the fundamental freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. And we, we remember how we got here. Donald Trump hand-selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe versus Wade, and they did as he intended. And now, in America, one in three women lives in a state with a Trump abortion ban. I don't need to tell the folks here, except for Virginia, in every state in the South, including Georgia, there is a Trump abortion ban. Many with no exceptions, even for rape and incest. And let me tell you the idea that someone who survives a crime of a violation to their body would be told they don't have the authority to make a decision about what happens to their body next, that is immoral. It is immoral. It is immoral. And everybody here knows one does not have to abandon their faith or deeply held beliefs to agree the government should not be telling her what to do. Not the government. If she chooses, she will talk with her pastor, her priest, her rabbi, her imam, but not the government, not some folks up in a state capitol telling her what to do with her own body. And notice Donald Trump still refuses to even acknowledge the pain and the suffering he has caused. He insists that, quote, everybody wanted for Roe versus Wade to be overturned which is just a further example of how out of touch the man is. Everybody wanted this. Women are being denied care during miscarriages. Some only being treated once they develop sepsis. They didn't want this. Couples just trying to grow their family have been cut off in the middle of IVF treatments. They didn't want this. Women have died because of these bans including a young mother of a six-year-old son right here in Georgia. Her family is here with us tonight, and we speak her name, Amber Nicole Thurman. And you all have heard me say, look, I do believe Donald Trump to be an unserious man. And the consequences of him ever being president again are brutally serious. 
These are just some of the consequences of the Trump abortion bans and what he does and what he's likely to do. And I pledge to you, when Congress passes a bill to restore reproductive freedom nationwide, as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. Proudly. And across our nation, we are witnessing a full-on assault on other hard-fought, hard-won freedoms and rights, fundamental freedoms and rights, like Georgia knows, attacks on the freedom to vote, attacks on the freedom to be safe from gun violence, the freedom to breathe clean air and drink clean water, the freedom to love who you love openly and with pride. And as Atlanta knows well, generations of Americans before us led the fight for freedom. And now, the baton is in our hands. It is in our hands. And so I'd like to speak in particular to all the young leaders that I see here this evening. I see you. I see you. I see you. And to you, I say, you all have grabbed the baton. I've seen what you do, and I see how you are doing it, because you are rightly impatient for change. You, who have only known the climate crisis, are leading the charge to protect our planet and our future. You, young leaders who grew up with active shooter drills, are fighting to keep our schools safe. You, who know now fewer rights than your mothers and grandmothers, are standing up for reproductive freedom. And I know it is because for you, I say to our young leaders, this is not theoretical. This is not political. This is your lived experience. And what I love about you is you are not waiting for other people to figure this out. So I see you and I see your power and I know so many of you are voting for the first time and know that our future is so good with you all at the helm. And I'm so proud of you. Can we hear it for our young leaders and first time voters? So listen, so much is on the line in this election, and this is not 2016 or 2020. The stakes are even higher because over the last years, and in particular the last eight years, Donald Trump has become more confused, more unstable, and more angry. You see it every day. He has become increasingly unhinged. Last time, at least there were people around him who could control him. But do notice in this election, they're not with him this time. In fact, just this week, America heard from John Kelly, a retired four-star Marine general who was Trump's White House chief of staff, who said that as president, Trump praised Hitler Take a moment to think about what that means. That Trump said, quote, Hitler did some good things. And that Trump wished he had generals like Hitler's who would be loyal to Trump and not to America's constitution. This is not 2016 and it is not 2020 including because just a few months ago the United States Supreme Court told the former president that he is effectively immune no matter what he does in the White House. Now just imagine Donald Trump with no guardrails. He who will claim unchecked and extreme power 
if he is reelected, who has vowed that he will be a dictator on day one, who calls Americans who disagree with him, I'm going to quote, the enemy from within. You know what that harkens back to? He's calling Americans the enemy within, who says that he would use the military to go after them. And he who has called for the quote, termination of the Constitution of the United States. Let us be very clear. Someone who suggests we should terminate the Constitution of the United States of America should never again stand behind the seal of the President of the United States of America. Never again. Never again. So America, there is a huge contrast in this election. Just imagine, just imagine the Oval Office in three months. Picture it in your mind. It is either. So, but there's a choice that everybody has. So let's imagine it for a moment. It's either Donald Trump in there, stewing, stewing over his enemies list, or me, working for you, checking off my to-do list. You have the power to make that decision. It is your power. It is your power. So. Pendant que vous regardez la vidéo, regardez à droite. Vous appuyez un bouton qui est en noir qui marque souscrire le Ça, c'est espagnol. Si vous en anglais, vous marquez subscribe. Si vous en français, vous marquez s'abonner. Cliquez sur le bouton. Lorsque vous cliquez sur lui, vous appuyez sur la cloche de bon côté. Cliquez sur la cloche là tout. Sur la cloche là, vous appuyez sur abonné automatiquement le passe sous première option. Ou après flèche là, sous deuxième option. Retire flèche là, sous deuxième option. Mettez-le sous première option, que c'est tout. Ça veut dire, chaque fois que vous vidéo, vous avez besoin de notification. Et puis, pas oublier, la gon like en bas vidéo ça. Et les gars, ça va faire ce que vous avez fait. Oubliez, nous avons même cas. Mes amis, nous avons une bonne nouvelle pour vous. Ou même qui t'a remis, rester informé sur toute nouvelle qui a passé à l'étranger ou bien en Haïti, eh bien, li pa l'autre côté c'est branché Chanel pour là qui c'est MPH01 là yo bonne nouvelle là sans vous remonter clean et puis propre et yo informé ou tout sur tout ça qui a passé sous question immigration dans pays États-Unis invitez en mou à l'abonner pour nia activer petite cloche notification pour pas rater aucune vidéo là la gueule yo live deux fois pendant journée c'était trait dans matin et puis 3h30 dans asso Invitez à vous faire ça, c'est un cac vous. Là, vous avez une nouvelle là, sans vous remonter. Aïe!